Behind me is the battlefield of the Battle of Cowpens. It was called Cowpens because this area here was a, uh, a cow pasture where uh, they would bring their cows just to uh, let them roam and fatten up a little bit. You can see it's perfect for pasture land. Right about here where I'm standing is where the British set up. They were led by a man named uh, General Tarleton. And uh, he had just come to South Carolina in order to try to regain control of the area for the British and had just won three major battles, was kind of moving his way through. And uh, this was a decisive place uh, where they would either win it all or lose. So the, the British had um, infantry who were, uh, they were trained British soldiers. They also had uh, cavalry and a group of elite cavalry called dragoons who carried swords and pistols for, uh, they were trained to fight hand-to-hand uh, -hand on horseback or on the ground. There was also a group of uh, Highlanders uh, who came and were fighting for the British as well, as well as some uh, Americans who had joined the British side and were fighting along with the British against the Patriots. Altogether, the British had about 1,200 men uh, at their disposal for this battle. So as Tarleton was marching this way, uh, he had heard that Daniel Morgan and the Americans were over on the other side of this hill, and he decided to come over and just destroy them. And so as they were marching up over this hill, the first thing the British would have seen was a thousand militiamen that were fighting for the Patriots. M militiamen were not trained soldiers, they were farmers, they were just everyday people who had taken up arms, used their hunting weapons, and come out in support of the Patriot cause. Daniel Morgan had put out the call for anybody, any militias that would come and help. And so militias from all over this area had come together and joined up, so a, a, a thousand of them, and they were just right over this hill ready to fight as soon as the British came over. The night before, Daniel Morgan had come to all the militiamen personally to try to encourage them, prepare them for this battle. And he told them, he said, take just three good shots and then you're free, which meant take three shots against the British and then uh, retreat. He said, if you do that, when you go home, the old people will bless you and all the young girls will want to kiss you. And that made them have the energy to be able to do this. So as the British came up over the hill, the, uh, the militia shot about three shots, which was a lot if you're using muskets, and, and then retreated back toward the, over this hill. Now the British thought the militia was just retreating because that was what they encountered in the last three battles. The militia would fire and then run. And so the, the British said, let's just take them. Let's not let them get away this time. Let's go and fight them and rout them and be done with them. So the British took off in a faster march coming up over this hill, expecting to just see a band of random militia. But what they found was a little different. As the militia fled back across this pasture, the, the British sent their cavalry to come cut them down. And so the cavalry come uh, galloping over here and start uh, attacking the militia. But Daniel Morgan had secretly had his own set of dragoons, which were skilled cavalry, back there. So as soon as the British cavalry came to attack the militia, the American dragoons came over here and started attacking the British cavalry, which allowed the militia to escape. And they went over that way, across that right side, and, and back behind, about 100 yards back behind, where they were protected for a while. As the American cavalry protected the militia and they escaped, the, the American cavalry then got out of the way. And as the British came over this little incline here, they found lines of American Continental soldiers, highly trained soldiers, lined up ready to fight. The Continental soldiers were here, uh, unexpected, the British did not expect this, uh, and they were ready to fire, and they did. They fired, uh, and, and then some of the Continental soldiers apparently misheard an order and they turned around and started to retreat. They started to walk away, retreating. 
Now, when the British saw this continental line retreating, they figured, oh, we just won this battle. Let's get them. So the British kind of broke ranks and they started just running this way to stop the Americans from retreating. Now, as, as the American Continentals were retreating, they were reloading their muskets and getting ready. And then Daniel Morgan gave an order for them to turn and fire. This was a very dangerous thing because the, the British were almost here. And so with the order, all these hundreds and hundreds of soldiers turned and fired directly into the British line. It was mass chaos as British soldiers were just falling all over the place. They did not expect this to happen. They're out of rank, there's chaos, they're being fired into, and at that same time, the cavalry that was back here, had regrouped back here in that field, the cavalry comes galloping over this left side and takes, takes over the left side of the field. Meanwhile, the militia who had also gathered, they come over on the right side. So you have continental soldiers here, you have militia soldiers over there, and you have cavalry over here, and the, the British are surrounded. Some of the cavalry, the, the dragoons, then circle around and come from back, from behind, and and the, the British just give up. Hundreds of them drop their weapons and fall down in surrender. Some run away. When Tarleton sees that his army has been taken over, he retreats and just starts galloping away. This maneuver that Daniel Morgan orchestrated was, is called a double envelopment tactic. It's only been used a few times in history. One of the most uh, uh, not notable is when Hannibal used it in Italy. But it's very dangerous, not used much, but the, uh, the Americans used it successfully here. Some people say this battle was the best strategic battle in the entire Revolutionary War. That's possible. All we know is that Daniel Morgan and his soldiers won a great victory right here on this field. And if it were not for this victory, the tide of the American army and the cause for independence may have been much different. In 1856, the Washington Light Infantry of South Carolina erected this monument right here as a testament of the battle that happened on this very field. And it's, it's located right here where the end of the battle took place. You can see the field where they all would have regrouped at the end and celebrated the American victory in this decisive battle of Kalpins.